Welcome back everybody to more Summit 2 by G2A.com Action. We're here in the SEA division with our fourth match for tonight, I believe. Yep, that sounds right. Fourth match for tonight. We've got Insidious Idol up against Myth Trust. I'm Gods from Beyond the Summit, back in the studio, back in action. And we've got SEA action here. Myth Trust, undefeated, definitely one of the teams to look out for here in the SEA division. They're 3-0, and so... They haven't played a huge number of matches, one of those wins being the, uh, the, the default win against Arrow Gaming as well. So, uh, their wins coming against First Departure as well as Zephyr. Zephyr, definitely the punching bag of the SEA division, with five losses to their name and just the one default win as well. So, uh, not exactly a big win there for Mythtrust. The one big win they do have is against First Departure, who are definitely a very formidable team and opponent as far as the uh, SEA scene is concerned. So... We'll see how Insidious Idol match up against them. Insidious Idol, they're one and three. They've had a rough start here. Uh, matches against losses against Invasion as well as Johnny's Revenge as well as uh, Team Malaysia. Team Malaysia, well, <laughs> I mean, he's talking about Zephyr being the punching bag. These guys uh, is Muhammad Ali right now. They're eight and zero. They are just unstoppable as far as the SCA division's concerned. They look like they're on a one-way track to qualifying for the land finals, which is. After their kind of stumble in style, I where they lost out to IAP, it's probably good news for the team, because they're meant to be the kings of the SEA scene. Well, we'll see what's going to be uh, coming into play here as uh, we see the draft well and truly underway. It's going to be Mythtrust playing over on that Radiant side, Insidious on the Dire side. And Mythtrust have gone for a little wisp pick for their draft here. Not quite as potent on the rate. Oh, well... Hey, there's different arguments. I prefer the Wisp on the Diet because of the, the double pull you have over on the Eastern Neutrals. And uh, I think it's slightly stronger as far as the Diet is concerned, but uh, even for the safe lane, like you can just fall back in the jungle a bit better. But still strong on the Radiant side. You can use that mid pull sometimes with the Tether if you get a range camp at the medium camp, or even a range camp at the big camp. But you can actually do that if you get it if you get the Tether off when the projectile's midair and draw the aggro of the creeps over. So. There are some things you can do to be sneaky with that mid lane wisp on the radiant side as well. But no real clear wisp partner just yet. We saw a couple wisp PA games yesterday in the Europe division when uh, Cottle Guy and I were casting, which was uh, pretty fun to watch. A very aggressive duo. PA kind of considered a carry and definitely is a carry, but offers a lot in the early to mid game as far as uh, damage output's concerned. So. Insidious, as far as their draft goes, they've got the Shadow Demon, Centaur, and Sanking right now, and uh, it's got a lot of aggressive roaming potential with the Shadow Demon Sanking. Uh, Sanking can always fall back, farm the jungle, get his get his Blink Dagger up, but in between and at the start, look towards this hero, maybe partnering up more with the Shadow Demon, looking for some early kills, you can smoke gank the mid, although Brew, uh, a rough, a hard hero uh, to actually gank and bring down, so maybe not going to be the easiest thing, but we'll see what they what they go for as a, as a result of this. Mythtrust maybe wants some kind of uh, tanky resilient partner to go with this Wisp of theirs. As to what that would be, I don't know. It's something where you've got the Brewmaster who wants to go mid, although can go off lane, can go safe lane, so Wisp not the best Brewmaster partner. They're going to go tiny, so Wisp tiny can mid, but this combo often does go safe lane as well if you want to get that free farm for the tiny in a different manner. It does make the Wisp with the bottle not quite as effective, but Either way, Wisp Tiny is Wisp Tiny. Still very powerful nonetheless. As uh, Insidious go into that fourth pick Invoker, Yasira most likely going to be the one handling this one. The solo mid. I don't know. I'm probably not fair to say pub star. He's been playing in the competitive scene for some time, was playing with Winter for a while uh, on his previous team on RNG Sports. And here he is on Insidious Idol, who have had some good tournaments. They actually are going to the MSI Beat It Land Finals in uh, Taiwan soon. Replacing Arrow Gaming there as the SEA representative. So that's going to be an interesting tournament. You've got a real hodgepodge of teams there from CSW. Well, actually, actually Team Immunity. They're not playing with their current roster. They're playing with their old roster to Insidious, 
to uh, Rave are also going. And then you've got some peculiar teams coming in from some of these other regions. Like there's a team from the Middle East, there's a African representative. So it's going to be a very interesting tournament. But right now we're in the Summit 2 by G2A.com. And well, this is your, your bread and butter list of teams. We're getting the best teams from all four regions, China, America, SEA, as well as Europe. Fighting over, well, what's currently a two hundred and like seventy thousand dollar prize pool. Let me check this up. Let's get my prize tracker up. Cyborg Matt, where are you with your prize tracker? We're currently at two hundred and sixty six thousand dollars of our total prize pool, guys. So if you want to support the prize pool, you can buy the compendium, buy the bundle, you get all kinds of cool stuff. You get Dusky, the Husky, the Courier, which is my favorite part. Um, some cool wards and uh, all kinds <laughs> the list goes on. Um, there's also a treasure chest with uh, different sets that add to the prize pool as well. So uh, we decided we didn't want to just stop at a compendium and bundle that adds to the prize pool. We wanted more and luckily we found some awesome workshop creators who, who shared that vision. But uh, as we are right now, a lot of money at stake, especially for some of these SEA teams who don't see uh, don't see these kind of big prize pools in the SEA scene. So to get the, the chance to compete in Star Ladder and here the summit is huge as we see a last big Sven coming out of Insidious Idol. In Carry Sven, we trust seems to be what the uh, the motto is going to be here for Insidious. They've got great setup for the Sunstrike. This has got to be an Exod Invoker. Every hero on the Invoker's team can set up a Sunstrike. Barrow Strike, Disruption, Centaur with a st with a Stampede and a Hoofstomp, or even just the Blink Hoofstomp. Sven with a Stormbolt. This is like dream come true for an Invoker. This should be an Invoker just going ham this game. Like, <laughs> I see this draft and think, like, this is all about the Invoker. At the same time, the carry Sven in the safe lane, if he gets his farm and doesn't get contested, can do quite a lot as well. It's not the best matchup against the Wisp Tiny. You've got to kill that Wisp. That's always what's going to come down to you. you. You kill the Wisp, and you're basically breaking the Tiny's ankles. He loses a lot of that mobility. More importantly, he loses the survivability from the overcharge, as well as uh, the extra attack speed that it provides. So you've got to kill that Wisp nice and fast and early on in those fights, and we'll see if in CSR can do that. They've got good damage to do it. Invoker often will probably be looking for him and trying to hunt him down. And if they can do that, then Sven can do his thing. Then Sven can go to town, but I think if he's fighting a Wisp Tiny and the Wisp isn't being dealt with, isn't being focused down, then he's in for some trouble. As we get our customary minute zero pause coming in from the two teams. Look, they're going to see a few players missing, not actually in the game just yet, but we'll hope they get them in in soon. It's got to, got to confirm we're playing an actual Dota game. Without the pause, it's it's not a not a real Dota game until you've got this this starting pause, so. Um, as for Myth Trust, last bit Clockwork, probably the interesting one. Clockwork's kind of fallen off. Uh, like he's not a popular hero <laughs> anymore. A few teams pick him up here or there, but all in all, we're just not really seeing Clockwork run as an offlaner as much as we used to. Uh, I think partly his late game impact is the hookshot does go through BKB, but as far as actually teamfight impact goes, he doesn't really shine compared to like a Tidehunter, even a Centaur. Like Centaur with a bit of farm, the Stampede just offers you so much more utility for your team. And I think the Tide, the Doom, these type of offlaners are just doing so much more these days in the Clockwork. And Clockwork also suffers from lack of damage output. Like teams running Ogre Magi in the offline. Like Ogre Magi is replacing Clockwork in some ways, because guess what? Ogre Magi just does a crap ton of damage to go with all his stuns and his durability. So. Now, Clockwork does have some unique spells that make him pretty powerful and handy, but I don't know how well Clockwork does against this kind of a draft. So much disables and damage output that this Clockwork is going to struggle to stay alive, it feels like, and I don't think he's going to have a very fun time in the off lane. I'm definitely, definitely not feeling like this is a Clockwork game. There are some games where I'm like, okay, Clockwork, not bad, but this one, yeah, it's a bit iffy. May force the Invoker to go for something like a full stuff when he otherwise would not have want to, wanted to. If you're going Quas Wex Invoker, you're thinking Rush the Orchid. If you're going Exord, you can, can actually go full stuff. Like, Dendi just likes going for the full stuff, the Blink, these mobility items only with his Exord Invoker. Don't see much of, like, the Necro 3 build. And I don't think Necro 3 is really the necessary build on the Exord Invoker anymore. Maybe if they decide, like, none of their other heroes have enough pushing power, they want to have that Necro 3 for the push, they'll do so. But I think they can get by without the Necro 3s this game. So we'll see what the situation's going to be. Oh yeah, just needing a little toilet break before the game. Man, I needed a toilet break. I just jumped out of like a one hour plus game and was lobby was good to go for this one and we, we're, we're moving along, chugging along through SEA action. I think three more games after this one. So for those of you tuned in now, stick around. We've got MVP Phoenix versus Team Zephyr. That's a bit of a grudge match, if I've ever heard of one. Coming up after this game, then we have 
Team Malaysia vs. Myth Trust. So two games after this one, if my schedule's correct, which I believe it should be. Yeah, so two more games after this. MVP Zephyr and Myth vs. Malaysia. Mm, Myth win this, then we could be looking at them taking on Malaysia as both undefeated teams, although Malaysia, definitely the more convincing undefeated team, seeing on 8-0 and not just beating down on some of those weaker teams in the SEA division, which it seems Myth Trust have maybe done a bit of so far. So... We'll see what the plan's going to be here as uh, we get ourselves into our fourth game of the night. Let me see what's going on. Please. There we go. I've asked them to be quicker, guys. Just for you guys. <laughs> you can't... Sometimes you can't rush a man when he's he's doing his business. I don't know. Miss are playing with a stand-in. Uh, I look like... He-he. I don't know too much about this player. I've not seen him playing with Mistrust as, as of late in a few games, uh, in some of the games I have seen, so... I'm not entirely sure what the situation is there, but... Insidious Idol looks like a similar story. There's a few players I don't recognize. You had my heart. Maybe some of the players just haven't got their names set up properly. So, um... Yeah, this is... This is going to be exciting stuff. I'm curious to see how Mistrust do. I think this is a team they should be hoping to beat if they want to get into the playoffs. Four of these 11 teams in the SEA division will be making it into those playoffs. And right now, Malaysia looking really good at 8-0. and zero. CSW, 5-1. and one, I would say uh, pretty good as well. Like, that's a convincing scoreline. You only play 10 games, and I guess worst case scenario, they lose the rest and end up 5-5. Five and five. But CSW have actually beat some decent opponents. So I... I mean, I have some decent hope. They still, they've, they've lost to Malaysia, so they've already... Like, they've... The one loss they have is to the toughest team. They still have to verse Insidious, which I think is an okay match for them. Um, I, have they played... In, no, they played Invasion in a different tournament, I believe. That was uh, Synergy League earlier today. They still have to verse Johnny's Revenge, which I think is an okay match for them. Still have to verse First Departure, and First Departure have definitely not been convincing. So, yeah, CSW are looking pretty good. I guess they beat... They have wins against MVP and Zephyr, who are maybe two of the weaker teams in the, the SEA division. MVP have kind of been slumping a little bit in some ways, but we'll see. We'll see how things progress here. Still plenty of action to go down over the next few days in the SEA division. We're going to see on the die side, Insidious Idol introduce their roster here. Centaur being played by Kimchi Fanboy 96 most likely in the offlane. Q on the Sanking. Boots first for him. Ysira, the solar midstar on the Invoker. We've got Chu playing the Sven, and you had my heart on the Shadow Demon. Over on the Radiant side, it's going to be the Thai team made in Thailand. In Myth We Trust, it's going to be Gotcha playing the Skyrath Mage, and it may be Insidious saying Gotcha if he's not careful. 325 movements meet, helping him get out of there, maybe. As uh, he scurries back to his Tier 2 tower, we've got SD playing the Wisp. Lakels on the Tiny, the Carry Extraordinaire. We've got Mypro on the Brewmaster, and that leaves... Hee <laughs> hee. Playing the Boots first clockwork. He's going to be headed to the offlane. As we'll see what the plan's going to be. Early Observer would plan down in the jungle. A sentry as well. This is to block the Wish shenanigans. Stop him from... I would say more than anything stop him from stacking. But also there is the potential to get the pulls into the mid lane. So either way, just some counterplays onto the Wisp. As the sentries pass over to the Skyrath, one to the Wisp. I like this splitting them up because uh, if this pull is blocked... Maybe you want to try and deward it, and Wisp is probably thinking, thinking the same thing. If this is blocked, I probably need to deward it. He doesn't have the like the no items bottle rush going on, which we often see. Oh, that's oh, they missed their block. That's worries not worrisome, but not ideal. I actually go dual lane mid. They're gonna fight dual lane with dual lane. Yasira says, I don't want to verse no Wisp Tiny. I'm going top and Shadow Demon Sven versus Wisp Tiny. Be interesting to see how things go down. Wisp is going to be hoping for one of those uh, range creep camps in this medium camp, and he's not going to get it. So no mid lane pulls for Wisp. Won't be possible. Not with a centaur camp there, and not with his big camp blocked off. That's the good news for uh, Insidious Idol, as uh, he's going to scout the centaurs. We'll see this big camp may look to deward it with his sentry. We'll see if he can get the right placement of that sentry warden. He should be able to do so on the high ground, maybe? Yeah, okay, so he'll get the deward. Won't get it before the one minute mark, I don't know. He won't get it before the one minute mark. So he's going to have to wait till the two minutes before he gets uh, the first camp. And if it's a range camp, he can pull it. I think he's more concerned about just stacking it than he is pulling it. And either way, I think II's investment into that central ward there has kind of paid off. Because that's no 
spawn until two minutes, so two spawns have been missed, and I think that's, I think that's a, a well worthwhile investment for them. As far as this mid lane goes, SD's not going to have the fastest of bottles. Normally you see that you, the Wisp just buy no items whatsoever and rush it out immediately, asking the other support to buy all the items, but because they wanted these Sentry Wards to go with the OBS and Courier, Wisp had to help out, so we'll still be a fairly fast bottle, even gets a CS, so Tiny says, look, you take one or two, get that bottle up and do your thing, so I think it's a pretty even dual lane versus dual lane setup, but once Wisp gets his bottle, the rune control is going to be the key thing. If Wisp can maintain control of the runes and just keep healing Tiny up, Tiny can just spam his spells for uh, harass as well as just damage as well, so uh, for last hitting, so it's it's going to be... I'd say, like, even as far as the hero matchups go, but m could be decided more or less by runes. As far as the, the other lanes go, we've got Centaur taking on the Brewmaster Skyrath at the bottom. Clockwork having a pretty rough time against this uh, Invoker Sanking lane. Sanking for now is kind of sticking to the lane. He can use pulls here, and once he gets maybe level 3, level 4, falls back and goes for some stacks. Look at this Shadow Demon. Positioning his illusions, I think maybe going to look for, for some stacks with them if they last long enough, and it looks like uh, the, the duration on them is going to be plenty to actually get some stacks off in the jungle, so... I like the play coming out of You Had My Heart on the Shadow Demon. Well... Clockwork at top. I, at this point, he's happy just to leech XP. He goes too close and he gets brought down. Sentra's actually feeling confident enough he can contest the farm at this bottom lane and contest his pull. Does not have... well, does have mana if he pops a magic stick for a stun, but... Doesn't have the boots, so until he gets boots, I don't think he can really be too pesky for this guy at the bottom lane, since Skyrath can just kite him around with relative ease. Mid lane, we will see a Stormbolt coming in, and there's your tether from the Wisp. Overcharges, Tango's, and he'll heal the Kells up, can even start popping those bottle charges. As uh, the first stack of many to come. Oh, we got the double stack even, too. This is uh, going to be, well, <laughs> the Kells. <laughs> this guy farms, and this guy... Farms very fast, and that's exactly what SD is helping him do with these stacks, so... Definitely watch out for Lakels on this Tiny. Already has his boots up, and doesn't need to go for a bottle as a mid lane, so he can go straight for the treads, drums, whatever it may want to do, and he's actually going for a kill! Stun, toss! So he's chew without mana, but... Doesn't have enough damage there. I don't think he got the perfect combo. I, I don't think he got the double avalanche damage, maybe, there. I'm not quite sure exactly what happened there, but... Possibly missing a bit of damage here. About to hit 4 minute mark and Wisp has guaranteed himself a rune. Oh, Okay, that's my pros bottle. I was about to say, how's this Skyrath got a bottle? So he gets his the, gets the bottle passed over from the Brewmaster and both runes bottled up by the Radiant Team. Clockwork almost died at top it looks like. Sunstrike had been used. He's actually back up in just a second here, but Clockwork heals, heals himself back up. There's going to be another stun. It's, well, it looks like Casual Arras. There's going to be actually some backup coming in from Skyrath Mage, but... Not throwing out the toss. Didn't actually have the mana for it. As SD will now heal Lakels back up. So Lakels, he's back mana up. Doesn't quite have enough for the combo just yet. Could use another bottle charge, but it doesn't look like we'll be seeing that. He he at top level four. So in fact, he didn't die and forced out a lot of spell usage. Is pretty important here. The Invoker Sunstrikes is always the X factor in this mid lane. Like you disrupt into Sunstrike or just Stormbolt into Sunstrike. There's a lot of damage output coming from. Aye, aye. If it, especially if it's on the Wisp. The problem is it's always the Tiny in front, and Wisp can just offer so much additional heal. As Tiny has picked up Bracer and Magic Wand, so... I like this. I think the Fast Trade is not as necessary. We'll get disrupted up into a Stormbolt, maybe a Sunstrike as well, but this, this is not going to work. Maybe with a Burrow Strike, but the Bottle Heal, the Overcharge is going to be enough. Lakel still alive. Has Tango's, has a Magic Wand, and... Okay, Sankin came in as well. Uh, that was close, but they still couldn't kill him. They used three heroes plus a Sunstrike. That was a triple exalt Sunstrike as well, and that just goes to show the power of this Wisp Tiny combo, or just Wisp in general. That's why this hero is what he is. That's why Secret loved to pick this Wisp, because of that crazy healing potential in the early game especially. Like, you run him against an aggressive lane and just have Wisp sit back and then tether plus heal. When uh, his teammate gets going on, be it something like a Necroforce or here the Tiny or a PA. And it's very potent stuff. Wiss then just goes back, refills his bottle, and Lakels is back to full HP, more or less. SD can now go guarantee himself some runes. It looks like he's headed bottom. Although Skyrath says, let me grab this one. And top rune will be controlled by II, so. Sanking. Bottles it up. Sun cost combo. Lakels is going to be careful. Where's that tether heal? Wisp is nowhere to be seen. 
Oh, the Kells went in blind for that top rune. You've got to anticipate I I controlling runes. When you're up against a wizard, you don't want to be giving away free runes, so. Not sure what the Kells was thinking there going up there. If he had the wisp behind him, it's one thing, but he has wisp nowhere near in sight. He here top disrupted with the lane ward. That was perfect execution. Now they get the Barrow Strike to follow. Some strike no mana? Oh, he didn't have the invoke. Well, I guess he does, but he needed 195 mana. So he didn't have the mana at the time of the Barrow Strike. Could have invoked to it, but didn't, wouldn't only have, would not have had the 175 mana he'd need. So I, I get first blood, and it's on the tiny of all heroes, so... A big pickup. Brewmaster also forced a TP top, so I ain't going to be happy about that one. Even though they didn't get the kill on the Clockwork, who is getting close to level 6 now. Boy, oh boy. Mikkel's at mid. It's, it's a minor setback at the same time. Like, it's not ideal. Like, that was a very avoidable kill, but... He's, he's definitely thinking, like, look, just buckle down, get my farm up. I've got stacks waiting for me, which, uh, well, not really. There's just a couple double stacks. Wisp has been focusing, focusing a bit more on some of this runes and just protecting the kills, as we will see Chew at mid lane. Getting chased down. He's trying to juke and jive in these trees. Gets spotted now. One more right click. There's the crit. Centaur TP's in as well. He does not have Stampede, though. That's what he really needed to save that Sven. And the Brewmaster Primal Split coming into play. Tiny getting healed up, bottled up. He's got a stun in just a second. We'll go in with the Avalanche. Sankey did not want to bring it to that one. Now he gets cycloned up as well. And Lakels has a toss in just a second. Perhaps the Boulder Toss will be enough. And Sankey plop back down on the ground. He can't really go into this one, perhaps, apart from the Wisp. And Wisp well, will be finished off easily. Sunstrike not even needed for that. As they change target, think about the Shadow Demon. But he gets up onto the high ground. Actually, he has a Creep Toss to him, but... That's not going to ha have all too much done. There's Brew, Axie level 7, and has Blink Dagger money. 20 gold away. Oh, boy. Hee hee. You say hee hee, I say ha ha. And uh, Mist Hookshot tried to get that regen rune as well. They've gone triple bottle on this, this Radiant team. I've got double runes and, I guess, enough fountain visits that they feel they can justify this. And I think so far it's worked out all right for Mythcrust. They bring things back to even with two kills apiece on both teams and Wisp, well... I think he's going to quickly realize, oh wait, I have kind of forgotten my job to stack these camps. Can do so, like, at the 9.52 you kind of want to be at a rune, but definitely when the runes aren't spawning in between those two minute marks, you've got to be stacking these big camps. What's Sanking up to? Smoke's in. I think he's looking for a steal on this big camp. Yeah, he may... Burrow Strike down and steal this with Sandstorm. He's going to be very careful. If Tiny comes, he gets brought down, but I don't think that's going to happen here. So he's actually going to get the steal. This is a big play if it goes unscouted. If it gets scouted, well, then it gets punished. And they see it. I think they've seen it. Tiny's going to come in with an Avalanche. Look for the toss. He's going to Burrow Strike high ground ASAP. Nope, it's too late. He gets the camp. Burrow Strike out of there. Yep, he's gone. The Kells. Maybe get some of the experience, but well played by Sanking, although he's going to walk right into a Brewmaster. Has Sandstorm and uh, as well as Bio Strike up to max level now in just a second, and he's also spotted this Brewmaster, is the important thing. And we'll slip by the Sly Devil that Sanking is. And uh, that's, a, that's a big steal, although <laughs> he's not out of the clear just yet. They really hate this Sanking. And they're going to kill Wisp. What a play. This Insidious Idol team is just on point so far. They've now got a Stampede. There's going to be a Stampede into a Hoof Stomp. My Pro has ultimate, but won't get a chance to use it. The Double Edge with the Soul Catcher. What a combo that Shadow Demon Centaur can be with that ridiculous damage output. Two points in Soul Catcher amplifies that Double Edge damage so much. And there we see another kill going Aya's way. The Hook Shot again. Two hooks in a row missing. He's definitely not laughing anymore about this situation. As uh, mid lane, there's some aggression coming in. Looking maybe to burst down this Wisp again. He's definitely the target you want to, want to and have got to kill first when it comes to being aggressive here. But with my pro teeping in, he's got Blink Clap as well as the Primal Split. Sanking going to play it safe and just burrow high ground. Probably wants to just go back to the jungle and finish his Blink. Because he's level 8, he's really high level, but no Blink Dagger just yet. And... Uh, does have the point in the epicenter, so probably thinking, let's get that blink up and start making some plays happen. As he'll find a little Wildwing Ripper, which he'll have to right click down here first.
A lot of heroes who are just trying to finish off and farm these blink daggers at the moment. Centaur one of them and he gets jumped at the bottom lane. Brewmaster pretty far away and the slow about to wear off. Not to mention the Ancient Seal will get the clap off as well as the uh, Mystic Flare and uh, Hoof Stomp. He's okay. Kimchi turns around, just double edges, gets the kill with a Sunstrike. He saw the relocate coming in and thought, oh, I'm screwed. And just said he'd fight his way out of it. And he gets the kill on the Brewmaster. That's a huge pickup for the Centaur before going down. And the kill went the way of the Wisp, which is not really the best here to get that, that money on. I guess he needs his boots right now and doesn't have anything really at all coming his way. But yeah, that's uh, a smart heads up play coming in from Centaur. As soon as he saw that relocate, he's, he just knew. He's like, nope, there's nothing I can do. I guess he wanted to turn around anyways. Even if the relocate's not coming in, he, if he can get that kill and then get out of there. But it's top lane now. The next point of attention for AI. They're up five kills to three, pressing the T1 tower, and Shadow Demon can rotate in. There's your disruption. Soul Catcher, Byro Strike. Perfectly timed after the disruption, and he, he still alive. With a cold snap and some right clicks, will go down. Yasir needs to be careful. He's got no escape from the primal split, and Tiny also rocking up to the top lane. As uh, Sank, going to try Byro Strike himself out of there. Doesn't really get off a Byro Strike that he was looking for. Maybe trying to get to like this high ground? I don't know if you can actually Byro Strike onto this, this cliff here, but that was not the Byro Strike he was after as... Uh, uh oh, Centaur shows up without a Stampede at the moment, and a combo coming out from Tiny will bring him down, so three kills going the way of Myth Trust, and they only lose their Clockwork, which isn't really the biggest of deals. I'll make it a fourth. Lakels gets himself a double kill. He suddenly got 3k gold! How does he do it? The farm and just the, the rate this guy just goes is just insane. And they're going to get Chu as well, it looks like. Great! Long range initiation coming in. Lakel says kill secured with the avalanche. He's now got himself a triple kill. Make it 3.4k gold. Sunstrike. No bueno. There's uh, no runes up as SD as well as Mipro will heal himself up with some bottle regen and be well on their way right now. Well, it's uh, a good position to be in after that fight. Tiny is just so rich. Yeah, that's that's what I was expecting. About a 2.5k, 3k gold swing off of that team fight. Brewmaster, no primal split for a little bit. Gets his bottle refilled. That TP bottle refill. I don't. I, I wonder if that's saying it's going to be fixed. I feel like it's got to be, as we will see. Uh, bottom lane. Silence into the nuke damage and no escape there. A Centaur did have a stampede but was silenced for a little bit too long. Invoker finally gets that top tier one tower now. A, a very heavy cost after the lost team fight though. Sanking Blink can be ferried out on the courier now. He has the money but continuing to farm up. Nice little stack in. No mud golems coming his way as he picks up a smoke to go with that Blink dagger. What's Wisp up to? Maybe just checking out this top rune although nothing in sight for him. Walk we at top, just tanking up, gets the treads, probably just see like blade mail, BKB type stuff this game, maybe a four stuff as well if he wants the extra mobility. But uh, BKB against this kind of a lineup is gonna be the name of the game. Like you you don't want to go it right off the bat. Lakels is gonna get the Ag Scepter first, may even go for like Yasha drums, whatever it may be, but he's gonna need a BKB eventually. Too much stuns, too much lockdown, and all the nuke damage coming into play is gonna be too hard to deal with without a BKB, but it's always that trap. If you get the BKB too early, suddenly it gets to like the 30 to 40 minute mark and you've got a 5 second BKB and it's kind of hard to fight with that 5 second BKB sometimes. Stampede forward. It's actually top lane. They've gone in on Clockwork once again. He, he will break himself out of the cogs. The fire burn damage will not be enough. He survives it. My pro miss a clap. The mid lane, they've also gone back in. It looks like a relocate about to uh, come on through as SD. Well, Bring down the Shadow Demon. Bring down his, his name part, uh, uh, name opponent to start things off. I uh, don't think Mythtrust will get too much more. Sanking in a position for an epicenter blink. And has not been spotted here, I don't believe. Will Q make his way in? The push is coming in. The damage is real. Lakels is just so tanky, though. Epicenter not being challenged just yet. Sanking's going the long way around here. They're trying to get Yasiri here. Toss forward. Oh-ho! Finishes them off with the Arcane Bolt, and it's a second kill here. There's your Epicenter. They actually do get the kill on the Tiny. The Wisp was asleep at the station there, wasn't there to protect him. I was off getting tossed into the fight, actually, so I don't think you can really blame the Wisp for that one, but without the uh, overcharge and without the Wisp heals, Tiny gets brought down to the epicenter, so it is a pretty big target to lose to Myth Trust, but the fact they get three kills off of it and possibly a tower is more than enough to make up for it, as we'll see 
The retreat off the tier 1 tower, so they won't get just yet. Runes are going to be spawning as SD heads top to pick it up, and it was still a about a 14-1500 gold swing going the way of uh, Myth Trust, even though they lose their tiny. Did buy, has bought his Ag Scepter, so has got his one big key item to start things off. Shadow Demon, think about seconds of Ancients maybe in a second here, but <laughs> you've got Sven. I guess Sven can farm it. Sven with Mask of Madness, he's level 8 though. That's really actually pretty painful when he's wanting to be one of your core damage dealers. Compare that to the tiny level 12, Bruise level 11. Sven's a pretty level dependent hero because you want to have, uh, you, like to fight and to do lots of damage, you need the cleave maxed out. But the problem is now he only has level 1 Warcry. Max Warcry is ridiculously good with 16 armor and the really short cooldown. More than half of what it is at level 1. Uh, sorry, less than half. Well. Tower gets brought down. That was just destroyed by the Radiant. Okay, no denying. No, nothing. <laughs> I think Glyph was maybe already used at mid lane and no one was really able to TP to go for that deny. No one gets the last hit either, but it's money in the bank for Myth Trust. Let's see, Sh Shadow Demon Sank. Triple smokes on them. They have not been using these smokes, but they've bought them all up. They only used one smoke in the early game and have since had three more to buy and not use. But they've got to be thinking, let's use these. And I don't think they can go just with two supports. They need Centaur. They need Sven to go with them. They need these uh, additional actual high DPS core heroes to join the party. Speaking of DPS, Lakel's not quite there. The Accept is nice, but he needs the follow-up items. The AC, and eventually the BKB, but he'll get a tier 1 tower, so those follow-up items will be coming sooner rather than later at this rate. And I talked about the full stuff for Yasir. He has gone that direction against the Clockwork, which I'd say is probably a pretty good decision. Oh, that smoke. I think it was maybe in, uh, in vision. You can see this little border here, and that's exactly where they would have seen. So I think the smoke may have been spotted by Dire Observer on the ramp. I did do it pretty close to the tower, but... Mm. Position of II, they're not really reacting to this, and they're going to actually scout the Shadow Demon from the high ground. Shadow Demon Disruption not going to come, gets Ancient sealed up, and there's no counter initiation. So I guess the smoke wasn't spotted, but... I didn't see exactly where they were, but it looks like that's something that should have been... should have been seen. Kimchi... Whoa, this is a late blink. 19 minutes on your centaur. That's something that's hurting I. I. You normally, even as an offlane centaur who's struggling, like you normally just kind of play safe, don't do anything too crazy, and once you get your and you get a couple of kills with your stampede, like get some teammates coming in or go gank another lane. And you normally see like a a late blink for a for a centaur is normally like 15 to 16 minutes, but this is 19 minutes in. I guess they prioritize more farm towards the direction of like the sanking instead. Pressure coming top lane though. Got to get those TPs coming in. Sanking going to be first. Centaur still lurking at this bottom lane. Could stampede for his team if they take a fight top, but he ideally wants to be there himself as Brew goes in. Thinks about the primal split and knock. Okay, there we go. He uses it now. Shadow Demon can only self-disrupt and he may not even get a chance to do so. Nope. Now under the tower. Yasira is completely trapped. The Rocket Flare will reveal him. Full stuff. Not exactly the best direction. Into an Ancient Seal as well. Yasira is as good as dead. The Sanking getting hit by the Wisp Balls as well. Barra strike deeper into the trees, but they know exactly where he is. The, oh, hook shot! The Mystic Flare didn't actually hit him, but it doesn't matter. They bring him down anyways. Three heroes dead. Tower goes down. Lakel with a Yasha now with the Tower Gold in pocket. Big fight going the way of Myth Trust as they get a 600 gold swing mid lane. Meanwhile, they've gone in for the relocate. They want Chu. Can they actually get him here? The blink clap and Chu doesn't really have a way out of this one. The Wisp Balls reach. Extend, extend, extend. It's the name of the game as Wisp goes back top and... Well... Happy with the outcome of that one, i got to say. For fourth kill for Myth Trust. It's a four for nothing trade. 20 minutes in the game, suddenly they've just broken free. And yeah, reflected in the team net worth grab. They've got almost a 7 to 8k net worth lead and a very fat Tiny of all heroes. That's it. Like, the net worth doesn't even tell the whole story. When Tiny is this far ahead of everyone, like your bottom farm is your Wisp, but Wisp can offer so much to this team with no farm. And the II team, like Insidious, they've got these blink daggers. They should be okay to fight right now, but they're just getting demolished, even with the double blink on Centaur Sanking. Sven needs his BKB in Voka. <laughs> I feel like I may even need a BKB as well, but I'm not sure if that's direction, the, the direction Yasira wants to be going right now. 
to smoke, and these last few smoke ganks have not been too successful for Insidious. We've seen Myth have much more success going to the enemy jungle with theirs, and Niper at bottom could reveal this from Fog. He's actually Invis, and one sentry available, it looks like, for the Sand King, so could pop that, but my pro, if he scouts him out with the the invis rune, and then he blinks fast enough away when he sees the if he sees the center and sanking, he could get out. But this smoke about to end. Hmm. The smoke's about to end, so I don't think they're going to quite realize what's up here. As uh, clockwork, oh, he could hook this. No, nope. fire strike down to the low ground, and it's actually bottom lane where center and invoker will be spotted. And my pro's thinking about blinking in with that clap primal split, maybe. That's got the level 2 ultimate with a Vladzora, so a lot of damage output can come out from this Brewmaster. <laughs> a lot of damage output comes out from the Kells, holy shit. 3.6k. And I think Mythrust are pretty happy with the pace of this game, even though they're giving AI a little room to just sit back and farm. Mythrust are just being a lot more efficient with their time and use of resources. Not to mention, I, their late game is still very scary with the Tiny. Like the Sven is nowhere near found enough to be a late game threat. Right now it's like the Invoker, and he's going back for a Necrobook, which I don't think is going to be a big threat to some of these heroes. Like, Brewmaster will get the Primal split off, the Necrobook shouldn't affect that because he's blinking in. Tiny, is he gone BKB? Yeah, he's gone BKB, so he can just right-click down the Necrobooks if he wants in BKB form and not even take damage. Not level 16 just yet, and once we see that level 16 Tiny... Expect pain to be dealt to Insidious. Sanking just trying to keep the pressure up on these towers, knowing that Mythtrust may be pressuring these other lanes. Glyph will come out, and I think Mythtrust will just keep falling back defending these, unless they're sure they're getting these T2s, and with a full HP Tier 2 and Ford Spirits at bottom, they're not getting that, so... Seems silly not to defend these towers, as Lakels will TP in. So, uh, Kimchi at top now going to go back towards a four staff to follow up his blink dagger and Myth Trust just have Insidious in this place where Insidious they can kind of farm, but like what's actually going to change change the state of this game? The BKB on Sven seems the most likely, but even that I don't see a man fighting a, a Wisp Tiny. They've got to kill this Wisp. Like that is priority number one in these fights. Find SD with a Sand King, Bio Strike into Sunstrike, whatever it may be, and just bring him down ASAP. This is this is a good showing from Mythtrust, because as I said earlier, they've not been as kind of dominant as they once were. They used to be kind of one of the T1 SEA teams, but over the last month or two, they've been slumping some, and they've had some roster changes since their uh, roster of old back in the TI2 and TI3 days when they were playing the, those qualifiers with their their old, old roster of like TNK and stuff and Arba, who have since retired and have moved on. But they've got some new, young, fresh blood, and... It's taken some time to maybe get where they are now, but it looks like their lineup is starting to gel and is starting to is starting to work. My pro at top finds two. There's going to be relocated. My pro should be able to get the primal split off, and that will be well. He d doesn't even need to. <laughs> the evasion works in his favor against the Sven. He has another clap in just a second. He had kimchi. Oh, not going to be too happy about the outcome of this one. He gets uh, well, gets onto the high ground. Is uh, the my pro brewmaster with the primal split here? He's going to chase down Yasuo. The full stuff is there, but I don't think it's going to matter. They put a cyclone if they need to use it. The avalanche toss down will go your invoker. Three heroes dead. Sanking, and somehow the center actually survived and got himself back to base, but I don't think Sanking's going to be too lucky. He's been spotted out, stunned up, tossed in the air, brought down, four for nothing. Lakels with a triple kill, hits himself up to that level 3 ultimate, makes it level 17 actually, and he's got 3.4k gold, can get the AC va fairly soon. May just go to the shop to buy his Hyperstone, or complete the Mantis out, whatever he wants right now. He is just so ridiculously farm. And there's just nothing, <laughs> nothing Insidious can do, it feels like. They haven't got the items. Sven is just did nothing. He tried to bring down the Brewmaster, but Brewmaster with that max evasion and Sven just not really dealing anywhere near enough damage to him. Ay ay ay. Not gonna be easy for Insidious from here on out. Every fight just worse than the previous one, it feels like at the moment. And Mypro now gets to work on his BKB, so you've got all this lockdown and you think maybe you can kill a Brewmaster with Chain Stun? Well, if he gets that BKB off, and he's often the one blinking in, so he can blink and clap and with a BKB and do some right clicks. Use a Drunken Haze before even ulties. He's not in that rush to instantly blink ultimate. 
And he doesn't have that feel. Like, if you blink, clap, and ulti, sometimes between the clap before the primal split, you get stunned. You get silenced. Well, not so much silence this game, but you get stunned by a Sand King into a center, into a Sven. And suddenly you don't get that ultimate off, so... The BKB just gives him that little bit of freedom to actually blink in with the BKB, clap Drunken Haze, and get some right clicks off. Like, even just a single crit can add some nice extra damage. And the extra damage is still coming with an AC almost complete full of Kel. Farm up some Ford Spirits, even. Insidious are just back against the wall right now. There's, they show no signs of life. Every fight just... It's not even coming close to their way. Lakels will just ch sit top with the Wisp, and Wisp smartly as far back as possible. Since as said, the one way to fight this guy is to bring down the Wisp first. You kill the Medic. You don't focus the tank in the front line. So even if that tank is dealing a crap ton of damage. Relocate, bottom lane. They want to fight this one. Sanking or Fire Strike. He's got no blink. He used the blink. He gets hooked as well. Easy pickings for Myth Trust. As they snap the Sand King out of the barrel and TP out will be successful for Shadow Demon. But this is just going to open up this bottom lane. So first time he gets the top tier 2. Now he's going to get the bottom tier 2. And guess what? His Assault Crass is complete. It's coming out. Wisp Relocate is uh, not going to be punished either. As it looked like Insidious were trying to find him on the Relocate back. But didn't manage to do so. Things just go from bad to worse. It's going to be... But a 12k gold lead now for Mistrust. And uh, that's just going to get even more extended as another tower going to go down. Insidious yet to take more than that tier 1 top tower, which took them a lot of work. They lost like a team fight where they got, well, not completely wiped, but lost four heroes just to get that tier 1 tower. It's definitely not a victory for them. Next objective, Roshan. Brewmaster getting close to his BKB, Lakels. Found the bounty, bounty room, but it looks like SD may once you know it's going to be the clockwork. He's got the empty bottle and will happily take that bounty room. So, easy Roshan. No punish coming in. No way you can try and punish this. All you can try and do is go for the tier 1 tower trade, but relocates back up. They may be trying to fight this mid lane if they can. Roshan getting low. Relocate can be start channeled soon if they want to try and fight mid, and I imagine they will want to. Eco's mid lane. Brewmaster goes in. Will not get the primal split off. He got green. He went for the clap. Gets chain stunned. Burst down. Tiny comes in from the back line, pops a BKB, but he's been purged. He's moving so slow. He can't get onto anyone. He finds the Tiny finally, t and... Oh, sorry, he finds the Sven finally, and Sven will actually be brought down. The Wisp will leave the Tiny here to keep on fighting. Avalanche on cooldown for three more seconds, and... Tiny gets stunned up. The Barrow Strike is there. Avalanche will hit. Toss coming in as well, and Q in a lot of trouble. He's got no Blink and no Barrow Strike for another second, so he gets brought down. SD's still alive. Needs to just be careful of the Sun Strike here, and that is up. SD... <laughs> he has Lakels as one. Oh, he's going to walk into a centaur. That's sad times. Boom. Invoker. Caught out. Clockwork. Lands a hook shot on him, it looks like. As uh, Insidious is just... Like, that was as good a fight as you're going to get. You, can, you burst down the Brewmaster before he ulties. Like, Brewmaster went for the kind of... I talked about it earlier. The greedy clap into Primal Split. If you go for both, sometimes you get stunned in between. Without that BKB. And that was the case there. We'll see Tiny get to work on this high ground tier 3. Aegis in hand. He's actually in a bit of a precarious position here. Backup's completely disappeared and... I'm not sure what Scarith can do. Maybe look for a 4 staff to save him, but that's on cooldown for 12 more seconds. Lakels can turn and fight. He's got a BKB soon. Wisp buys back just for this relocate. SD though in a terrible position. The Sunstrike not going to kill him off. SD gets... Well, double edge. That's not enough damage. Still, SD still alive. Gets the mech and that's going to heal Tiny up. A good chunk tosses the sun in the air. Sven just gets annihilated with the Mask of Madness on. Takes so much bonus damage. And it's GG. Insidious just tap out. Realize there's nothing they can do to fight this Tiny. And Lakels... Well, there's a reason. Myth trust. It's, not, it's, it's often called in Lakels we trust. And... That's exactly the case here with the Lakel's Tiny. 29 kills to 9, a convincing victory for Myth Trust. You go up to 4 wins, no losses here in the Summit SEA. So that's a uh, good position to be. They're going to be versing Team Malaysia later today, who are 8-0. and zero. So two undefeated teams going up against each other, although Malaysia definitely the heavy favorites even so. So guys, that does it. That concludes our fourth game of today. We've got... Two more matches coming your way before that Malaysia vs. Myth showdown. We have got Team Zephyr taking on MVP Phoenix. It's the Korean Dota grudge match in some ways. And we'll see if Zephyr can uh, take one off MVP. It's been a long time since they've won a series or a game off MVP. You've got to go back a couple KDL seasons for that to have happened. And Zephyr currently not even in that tier, in that tier 1 division for the Korean Dota League. But 
hey, they're still fighting, they're still going strong, and they're going to do their best against MVP Phoenix, guys. So stick around. That game coming up in, I think, like 15 minutes' time, maybe. Yeah, 15 minutes. So 15-minute break, we'll uh, run some ads and get back to you guys soon. You're watching The Summit 2 by G2A.com.